All right, let's look at this one. We've got a uniform 50 kilogram cylinder rods at rest in position shown. <clears throat> this force of 600 newtons is applied to determine the angular velocity of the rod when the rod reaches vertical. <clears throat> so it starts right here. It ends right here. It's very important that you can visualize where it starts and where it ends because some of these, <coughs> it'll draw it at its starting position or some of these might kind of draw it in between. Make sure to clarify, okay, it's starting right here, it's ending right here. We're going to use conservation of energy, right? V plus T plus non-conserved work equals V plus T. Each of these could be, have two terms, right? This could be gravity and a spring, linear and rotational. F, D, M, theta, same thing. Gravity, spring, linear, rotational. <clears throat> I think the more comfortable you are with these, the more you don't, you're not going to want to write the whole thing, <clears throat> but maybe if you're not sure what to do, uh, if you've got time, or if you just kind of like to do the exact same thing every time, kind of like I do, <clears throat> you, you could write down this whole equation right here. Y'all probably can't do this <clears throat> like I can. Uh, I'm going to take a shortcut. Now, I remind myself, hey, that's point G, point G, point G. This is the height of point G, the velocity of point G. <coughs> Whoops. I did that wrong. The I of point G. This omega, it doesn't matter, right, what point you're looking at for the omega. The omega is for the whole bar, for the rigid body. But that I, <coughs> it is different. The mo moment of inertia about the middle versus the moment of inertia about some other point. So you want the moment of inertia about point G. Okay. <clears throat> now, did it say it started from rest? Yeah, it started from rest, so both of these are zero. Th there was no spring. Why did I even write one half kx squared? There was no spring in this problem. <clears throat> All right, there's no moment in this problem, but there is an F right there, an FD that we're going to have. Okay, so I think we're ready to start tackling this, start plugging things in. Let's think about the MGH <clears throat> initial and the MGH final. Where is point G? Let's be careful. Point G is right here. <clears throat> so it starts with an M, G, and a height of 2. <clears throat> It ends, we'll talk, well, be careful here. This whole thing is five meters long. It ends at a, a 2.5. All right. Let's see, that's zero, that's zero, that's zero. Force times distance. So I've got this constant 600 Newton force. <clears throat> and it goes a distance. If I looked at this A squared plus B squared, if I know four and five, <clears throat> the other distance is three. It's positive because the force is going in the same direction as the displacement right there. So that's the left-hand side of my equation. The right-hand side would be 50, 9.8 <clears throat> times 2.5 plus 1 half mvg squared. Do I know vg? Uh, that's that point g. It's that, that point g right there. <clears throat> um, I don't know it. <clears throat> this is before it hits the wall. Determine the angular velocity when it reaches vertical. It hasn't hit the wall. If it had hit the wall, then there would be a collision. We couldn't use conservation of energy. Uh, so this maybe this does have some velocity. It's, it's going towards the wall right there. Plus one half I of G of a slender rod. This will be on your formula sheet. But the I of a slender rod... <clears throat> One twelfth m l squared. All right, so I've got the one half already in front of the i. Then I have a one twelfth inside of here. M <coughs> l the whole l squared times omega squared. All right, so that's my equation. I want to solve for this angular velocity. Ah, uh, darn it! I've got that vg. I've got the final velocity. Do I know the final velocity? Of point G, I don't think so. It didn't really tell me the final velocity of point G. I don't think it's zero. It hasn't hit the wall yet. But are these two related? Are these two related? They might be related if I can figure out 
<clears throat> VG equals R omega. If I can figure out the distance from that G is to the to the center of rotation. <clears throat> well, where's the center of rotation? This is not like pinned right here. Uh, this this is, is moving. So this bar is not in pure rotation. Something is not in pure rotation. How can you find the center of rotation? At this instant, what instant is this? This instant over here is the final instant. <clears throat> so I want to find the instantaneous center of velocity, instantaneous center of zero velocity at the final position. So let's find ICZV at the final position. <clears throat> so at the final position, it is vertical. This bottom is going down this top is going up so where is the center of velocity okay the center of velocity is at this very very top ah, so I shouldn't draw it right there this very very top point <clears throat> right here there's the instantaneous center there's the instantaneous center so what how far is point G from the instantaneous center 2.5 so vg equals 2.5 omega and i'm going to plug in that right there i'm going to be careful to square 2.5 and square the omega so 2.5 squared and omega squared <clears throat> and then i can solve for omega squared don't make it this too complicated don't have to use quadratic formula <clears throat> because we have omega squared and omega squared so just solve for omega squared take the square root um, and get <clears throat> our answer omega would be 2.73 radians per second. Now, so first of all, uh, in my math, if I get omega squared to be negative something, I, I would say that's impossible. If I get omega squared, mathematically that's impossible, so that means that is impossible. One of two things has happened. Either you made a mistake, or it just never makes it to where you thought the height or the final position that you thought it made it to. All right, so your omega <coughs> squared is never going to be equal to a negative value. You're going to get omega squared. So I don't, whatever, whatever this, um, let's see real quickly. <coughs> we got the you know, omega squared was 7.45. Uh, but when I take the square root, it, this is really plus and minus 7.45, plus and minus 2.43. Uh, 2.73. <clears throat> Start over. This is really plus or minus 2.73. This doesn't tell you clockwise or counterclockwise. So you've got to think about clockwise or counterclockwise yourself. Okay. <clears throat> so this one is 2.73. Uh, and if the center was up here... This is going that way. This is going that way. This was going clockwise. This was going clockwise. Anyway, box that in. <clears throat> 2.73 radians per second. What did we do? We used conservation of energy. Plugged everything in that we could. Um, and then we said, hey, the velocity of point G is related to omega at this final position by 2.5 <clears throat> omega squared. Okay. 